Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome. It is bring back the church. Winning souls and making Jesus smile. We are here again where we are discussing about the church. In the last session, we did define what the church is. And we spoke about the church, its origins, and where we are today. Today we are continuing again, looking at it. Remember, in the last session, we spoke about activities that we said should be found in the church. What are Christians expected to be doing? What is expected to be found within the church? And today, we are also going to dwell on that particular matter within the church. What is supposed to be done in the church? Let us go into the word of God in the book of Matthew chapter 6, verses 31 to 33. I will read two versions. First one is King James Version. It says, verse 31, Therefore, take no thought, say, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Remember when we are talking about Gentiles, we are talking about the people who were in outcast when the church started. For your heavenly father knoweth that you have need of all these things. This is what the word of God says. It says our father, God, knows about all our needs. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. This is the topic or this is the verse we are going to dwell much upon. And his, his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. What things? The needs we are talking about. Which the Bible stated clearly that our Father knows about these things. Let us go again into this other version. Matthew chapter 6 verses 31 uh, to 33. Let me start on verse 31. It says, So don't worry, say, what will we eat? It means people, even Christians, have got a tendency of worry. Huh? Or what we will we drink? Or what we will wear? For the idolaters, this version says the Gentiles. Other version says heathens. Eagerly seek all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Verse 33, our focus point says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be provided for you. Tonight, I want us to look at the Christian way of living from this angle. What is the primary duty of a Christian in a church? Every Christian is not supposed to worry about what they shall have. The Bible said, worry is for those who are not Christians. Someone would then ask, so if I worry and I'm in the church, does that mean that I'm no longer Christian? <laughs> that one you answer it on yourself. Let me continue. God is not committed wherever he is not prioritized. God works where he is put first. If you put God first in your life, then you are rest assured that you have got God along the journey. Remember, we are saying we want to understand where the church is currently. Is it where the church is supposed to be? When Jesus was establishing the church, he said to them, Go ye therefore and preach the word of God to all the parts of the world. Then here on Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, he says, When you are in the church now, don't seek about anything else that you might need. 
but seek the kingdom of God first. Seek God first. Brethren, this is where I would love you and me to put our focus on. Are we putting our focus on God? Are we focusing on God in everything that we do? The challenge we are having today in church, why we are seeming to pursue other things which are not God, is because we don't know what to look for in the church. I will ask you a question. The moment you came to the church where you are right now, what is it that triggered you to go there? Was it deliverance? Was it wealth? Was it fame? Was it that you just liked the way they do their things there? So the results of the things that you are getting there is nothing else but it's corresponding to the need or to the drive which drove you to that church. Don't expect different results when you were drawn by different things altogether to be in that place. In every church, you are supposed to seek God first or God's kingdom first. Then all these other things will come. Why you are still struggling when you are in the church where there is an anointed man of God? It's because you are in that place and you are seeking other things other than God. Remember, being a Christian is not a cover-up that you know God or you are seeking God. You are made a Christian or the evidence, the results that comes will show us that you are seeking God. Remember in Matthew 6 again, when Jesus was praying people to pray, he said when you pray, say, thy kingdom come. Huh? Thy kingdom come. When God's kingdom come, God becomes the center of everything that we do. When God's kingdom come, love becomes the rule of the day. Unity becomes the rule of the day. You will not judge anyone and that is the church which was in the mind of Christ when he established the church soon after Pentecost. Our challenge we are having another church which doesn't have this. Where the kingdom of God is not existing. Remember, in the kingdom of God, it is God who is in charge. It is God who controls everything. But in our own churches, is God controlling everything? Is God controlling the way we worship? Is God controlling all our activities or we are controlling all activities ourselves? Then that one alone shows us that we really need to bring back the church to its original position. And that gives us the reason to be here talking about bringing back the church, winning souls, and making Jesus smile. We are having more people backsliding in church but still going to church. We are having many souls being crushed within the church. They came looking for love and they found hate within the church. They came looking for unity and they found disunity in the church. They came to church expecting to meet God, but they met leaders and fellow church members. They never met God. It's happening in our churches. It's happening in our daily lives. But it's our duty to take back the church to its former place. Remember that the rich man went to hell, not because he fornicated, no. Not because he was a thief, no. He never consulted a witch doctor. The rich man went to hell just because the rich man never prioritized God. It's so sad, but it's the truth of the day. That most of the people, they are even in ministry, but they are not seeking God. Most pastors, they are there in ministry, but they are after their own fame. They are after wealth. They are not after God. I am a pastor, but obviously if I lose my purpose in the kingdom of God, then I became irrelevant. Remember, even Jesus at one point, he was followed 
by Andrew. He saw Andrew coming and the other guy, and he asked them, What is against thou? And Andrew and the other guy said to him, uh, Where thou live? Where do you live, Christ? Where do you live? Where do you stay? Imagine they followed Jesus to ask him, Where do you stay, Master? The fact that a man of God is being followed by a lot of people, it doesn't mean that those people, they are here for God. It doesn't mean that these people are coming to church for God. People can follow a person for any other reason. People can follow a person because of other motives, which is not God. The fact that we have got pastors in church, leaders in church, it doesn't mean that God is there. That is why most of the people right now, they are very, very disturbed. Actually, they are devastated and discouraged. They went into a church, received a prophecy, received a word of declaration, expected their lives to change, but nothing changed. Why? You pursued a gift. You never pursued the giver of the gift. What you received is the gift. You didn't receive the giver of the gift. Whatever you get from a gift, it needs the owner of the gift to make it permanent. Every time that you went into the church and you heard other things which is not God there, obviously will give you other results which are not from God. Remember, spiritual gifts are given without repentance. Anyone can have it. Anyone can use it. Anyone can have it. Anyone can use it. I want you to always check. Is the giver of the gift there? Check on Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. They said, we will not compromise. Whether we are saved or we are not saved, we will not compromise. It means they were never in the church for deliverance, nor for anything else but for God. That should be our attitude as Christians. Let us love God and give ourselves to God with everything. Whether we benefit or we don't benefit, let us love God. I will say this to you. If you see yourself in every place, wondering what is going around your, your life, look at the way you value church. How much you prioritize your church and yet other churches. How much you prioritize your own pastor and yet other men of God. A person passing an unfinished church building, they will say, these people, they are overzealous. Why do you celebrate what pains God? God is hating because people are backsliding, because churches are not being built. You are supporting the same motive of the devil of stalling the work of God. I will speak this to everyone out there who has not yet received Christ, that you need Christ and his love. That will make you perfect and full. Follow after me in this prayer and accept Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of your life. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior again. I confess with my mouth that I am your starting from now. Be in my life forever and ever in Jesus' name. Congratulations. You are born again. You are a child of God. Look for a Bible-believing church wherever you are and go and get natured there. The Lord God will bless and increase your life. We are saying to you, one thing which you need is Jesus Christ. One thing which you need is God himself. Let us bring back the church in its po position of love. You need oneness and the Lord will increase and bless you. In Jesus name. God bless you. Don't forget to pursue again the next session that we shall bring. Where we shall be talking about bringing back the church to its position. Winning souls and making Jesus smile. God bless you. Thank you.